Okay. Switching to English. Good morning, good evening, whenever you're watching this, or for those who are here, it's for us evening now. Um, very excited to be here, very happy, and I'm happy with the turnout as well. The purpose of today's workshop, as you all know from this lovely picture here, is to learn how to prepare for an interview in English. Okay. We're going to do that in English to help you with the language and the jargon to kind of put you in that proper mindset there. And we'll walk through about the next hour and a half, uh, what this means, what this looks like, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. For those who have not heard of Simon Sinek uh, and his amazing book and TED Talk, Start With Why, um, I like to start with why, right? Why are we here? What's the purpose of this workshop? What are we trying to accomplish? Yeah. So number one, interviewing is a challenge. There's, there's no doubt about that. It's not something that is particularly easy. Yeah. Um, and it's a skill, right, that uh, takes preparation, it takes time, it takes energy to hone, to focus, to work on. Okay. And interviewing in English for non native English speakers can be difficult. We know that. Right. All jobs today require interviews. There are very few uh, workplaces that do not demand an interview. Uh, interviewing is crucial for your career development. All right. And this is a key point here. The difference between an okay interview and an excellent one is colossal, okay? I love interviewing. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do. It's one of my favorite things to be part of, be it on the person who is doing interviews and be it on the person who is being interviewed. I, I enjoy the experience genuinely. I'm one of those very few percent of the population that actually has a, has a fun time with it. I know it's a bit strange, but we'll, we'll jump into why in a moment. The trick here is that ultimately, it's not that hard at the end of the day. And that's really what we're gonna be focusing on in the workshop. Yes, it can be difficult. Yes, it can have a challenge and, and, and there's lots of pressure and stress and all that kind of stuff, but ultimately not that difficult. And let's talk about why. Okay, a little bit about myself. My name is Shimon, and I am the manager of international programs at the college. Um, I'm a public speaker and a public speaker coach. I've worked with clients in more than 40 different countries around the world. Uh, Unite 2030 Youth Delegate uh, and uh, Outreach Division Lead, as well as a track mentor, work in partnership with the UN on the Sustainable Development Goals. And I'm also a TEDx organizer. I'm a Dale Carnegie alumni. Some of these logos you might have heard of, some of them not. Um, that's a little bit about me. Okay. First things first, a little bit of statistics, yeah? Number one, you only have about seven seconds to make a strong first impression. Not a lot of time. Number two, 71% of employers won't hire someone that doesn't follow the appropriate dress code. Number three, 76% of job seekers are unable to make eye contact. 39% get rejected over overall confidence, right? And bad handshakes are 10% of uh, the reason the applicants get rejected. So you look at these statistics and you say, oh, okay, great, Shimon, no problem. Uh, all I need to do is uh, look confident, make eye contact, have a good smile, dress appropriately, and uh, no need for your workshop. And, and ultimately, you're, you, you have a good point. It's definitely the right direction. Definitely start there. If you're looking for a starting point, this is definitely where you start. But as I mentioned in the beginning, the difference between a okay or a good interview and an excellent one is what we're going to focus on today. So what we are going to talk about, and these are the goals for today, is number one, understanding interview dynamics. What does it mean? What does it look like? Why is it special? All right? getting an introduction into the mind of the interview. In the last uh, month and a half alone, I've interviewed more than 200 students. Uh, I've built interviews for many different companies and different corporations. Uh, again, something that I enjoy doing and I appreciate the process and I know what it's like to be on both sides of things, okay? Next is understanding the key points on how to prepare for an interview, right? Especially in English. 
Next is approaching the ways to handle stress, right? The non-native English speaking part is a big challenge for many of us, right? So knowing how to handle that stress is one of the things that we're gonna focus on. And lastly, a creation of an interview methodology, okay? What that means, we'll delve into in a moment. Okay, a little bit about the workshop. Number one, if you can turn on your camera, that would be amazing. Uh, it's a little bit selfish, but it's more for me than it is for you, right? If I can see you and if I can interact with you, I can shape my content according to your reactions, yeah? Um, you can sit at home very comfortably and have your camera off. There's no problem. If that's what you want to do, it's okay. But it definitely helps me when it comes to my presentation, okay? Try to avoid distractions, get comfortable, stay muted, right? And questions in the chat if you want to, or occasionally there'll be times to uh, pop in and speak up. Uh, and today we're only going to speak in English. So let's challenge ourselves uh, one step further and have that in mind. Okay, let's talk about interview dynamics. Interview dynamics are unique and special because they're one of the only forms of public speaking that is reciprocal. What does that mean? Reciprocal meaning that you have an opportunity to respond. Yeah. In the majority of versions of public speaking, right, there's not that much of an emphasis on returning the conversation to the speaker, right, whoever it may be, whether it's uh, on a stage, whether it's in a, a business presentation, whether it's, uh, and again, in almost any of the forms, if you want to remind yourself some of the general functions of communication, right, we have instrumental, regulatory, and directional, personal, heuristic, imagine, imaginative, informative, right, these are all categories of communication in that sense. And if you want to understand the four main functions, right, of why we do this and how it works, again, it's control, motivation, information, and emotional expression. I'm not going to delve into these concepts today. Yeah, we'll save that for a future workshop. But this is just general public speaking uh, knowledge when it comes to that. So when I, we mean that public that interviewing is a only form of public speaking that's reciprocal. It means that you have a chance to interact, right? It's still formal, yeah? You're still being judged. You're still being evaluated, but you have a chance to talk with the person that is addressing you, which is very unique in that sense. Okay. So what makes an interview different? Okay, we said that it is different in some sense because we can talk to each other, great. Uh, but what makes it such an interesting dynamic? What makes it so 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 special in that regard? Well, number one, there's a predetermined goal or purpose. Yeah, we come to the room with a clear outcome. We want to get hired for the job. We want the company to take us. We have questions for them, whatever it may be. There's a predetermined goal that we have in mind. And like anything in life. Once we identify our goal, it's a lot easier to draw the steps back and understand what needs to be done to achieve that goal, like any good strategy, okay? So number one, that clear a goal for the outcome is something that you don't have a lot of times in other forms of public speaking, okay? Number two, you have a pre-existing foundation, meaning, this is not the first time the person has heard your name, right? They've seen your CV, right? They've seen your resume. They've uh, read your profile. You put on there your LinkedIn profile and your Facebook page, whatever it may be. Um, they, 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 they see some sort of background on you, okay? This is not walk into the office, unless you are walking into the office, which is a different dynamic. We could talk about that as well, okay? Number three, there's a standard expectation, right? Standard in quotes. Meaning there's a certain way we're supposed to behave. There's a certain expectation of what's going to happen. Yeah. There's a certain uh, atmosphere that we know will take place more or less in the expectations of the interview. Okay. Uh, and finally, right, this is the big one here, right, is that you're evaluated, right? You evaluate what each other's suitability for long-term compatibility. It's supposed to be a long-term, you know, relationship in that sense based off of physical characteristics, intelligence, general knowledge, personality, experience, and financial status, right? All the things that you are looking for in a candidate. Now, those who are kind of leaning in this direction, 
what this may sound like is dating. If you think about it, interviewing and dating is not that different. Predetermined set, standard expectation, evaluating each other for long-term compatibility or whatever it may be. It's like dating, it's just different, okay? Or the other flip side of things, it's like an interrogation. Also very similar, okay? These are some, uh, some basic concepts that we can kind of relate to. So understanding the mind of the mind of the interviewer, right? Put yourself in the shoes of the interviewer, right? Or in this case, if you like the dating example, even dating, yeah? You're not the first candidate for the job. If they're doing interviews, they're doing interviews for a bunch of people. It could be two people, it could be three people, it could be 50, it could be 100. You don't know the number, yeah? Uh, you can look up certain statistics about the company ahead of time to see uh, how many candidates they have and whatever it may be, right? But at the end of the day, if you're walking into the interview, the chances that you're the only candidate are slim to none. Next, the person interviewing you has done this before. Interviewing is typically share is typically uh, given over the role to a more managerial position or someone who's running directly the program, uh, and 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 they they're familiar with this kind of a context, right? So they've done this interviewing stage before. They've seen better applicants in general, right? And overall, they're generally tired. Interviewing in the interviewer's side of things, in their point of view, is is a is a very uh, uh, time-consuming uh, process. It's very energy-consuming, and you sit there and you meet people again and again and again, right? And you get tired at a certain point. So when we start off with our process, with one, understanding that there's a certain goal, right? And then two, putting ourselves in the, in the shoes of the interviewer, knowing that, okay, hey, think about it. This is not the first time, right? The thing that makes the difference here is preparation. Now, let's talk about preparation. Ultimately, in an interview, right? Um, for the majority, the vast majority of cases, especially for the more basic interviewers, not talking about uh, engineering or certain technical skills or whatever it may be, they'll talk about a few different aspects of uh, you overall. Number one is yourself, right? On the personal side of things. Uh, that, that classic question, right? Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, yeah? What we're checking for, what people are checking for in that regard is your personality, your personal self, yeah? So you know that they're gonna ask you something about yourself. Next, they're gonna ask you about your experience, yeah? They wanna know more or less what you've done, okay? Uh, they wanna know about your personal attributes. They wanna know, okay, you're determined. Uh, you're uh, hardworking, you're a self-learner, you're independent, you're creative, you're strategic, throw in whatever you want, what, what, whatever word you want, and we'll talk about that as we go along, right? They want to know about your personal attributes. They also want to know why you, yeah? And we hear that again in the interview questions. Why should we hire you for the job? What do you think you can bring to the team, right? It's always about you specifically. Next is job compatibility. They want to make sure that you're a good fit for the job. Again, there's a clear goal here. They want to know if they should take you or if they should take somebody else. So if we know this, right? Oh, and just to give you an example, right? Here are some of those uh, classic questions. And if you want even more, I put a little uh, link there uh, that you can uh, explore, right? Tell me about yourself. How'd you hear about the position? Why do you want to work at the company? Why do you want this job? Why hire you? What do you bring? What are the strengths? What are your weaknesses? Personal achievements, professional achievements, again and again and again. We know the questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we know the questions to the interview. We don't know specifically what they're going to ask, right? We don't know, are they going to say, tell me about yourself or whatever it may be. But we know that in general, it's going to get to those points, right? Those points of your personal self, experience, personal attributes, why you, and your job compatibility. At the end of the day, right, practically speaking, 
what we need to think about is what do we want the interviewer to know about you that's not on your CV. That's not on your resume, right? Again, think about it. Put yourself in the, in, in the shoes of the interviewer. They're sitting there. They have your CV in front of you. They've read it over. Maybe you've been asked already to do a certain assignment. Maybe you filled out an application form, right? Uh, whatever it may be. There's many different ways of onboarding new employees in that sense, right? So they have some sort of background here. So what's the point of the interview, right? And meaning for you, what is the point of the interview? It's your chance to get off that piece of paper, right? And get to know the person, you know, face to face. This is ultimately the key element. This is the basic foundation here. And let's talk about how we do that. Let's give an example, right? Something that you may want the interviewer to know that is not written on your CV or more than just, you know, those two uh, sentences on top that say, I'm a hard worker and I do this and that. Everyone writes the same thing at the end of the day. It's really not that complicated, right? Do a little bit of Google. All of these, the majority of them look very similar. That's why there's another statistic. I didn't put it on there, but it takes six seconds or eight seconds for a, uh, a job screener to kind of look over a CV and make sure it's relevant or not, yeah? CV workshop, maybe we could do that a different time. We're not gonna focus on CVs, but Again, getting off that piece of paper, things that we may want the interviewer or the job, the, uh, the company to know about us. Maybe it's that you're innovative and creative and you get things done, right? Maybe you're the kind of person who's strategic and thoughtful. Maybe you're kind, caring, and empathetic, right? We have strong interpersonal skills, right? People skills. Uh, and you're a team leader. Maybe you're dedicated and hungry and willing to do whatever it takes for the job. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, right? It's insert your your uh, attribute or whatever it is there, right? But that's our goal. Before we even walk into the interview, we ask ourselves the question, I want my interviewer to know that I am something. That's the first part. Before we even delve into how to introduce ourselves, what to do, what to say, uh, when to ask questions, how to ask about the salary, um, uh, where do I put my hands, you know, things like that, right? The first thing before we even walk in is understanding, right? What do we want to get out of this interview? It's reciprocal. The purpose of the interview is for the interviewer, right? To see if you are fit for them. If that's the case, we can prepare ourselves to fit that picture of whatever it is that they're trying to fill, if that's the job that you're looking for at the end of the day, right? We're not here to uh, lie. We're not here to project false uh, personalities, right? This is about you at the end of the day. But if you think about your attributes and what makes you different, right? This is where we start. Okay. So what does that mean? What does that, what does that require from us, right? Now or today or for your next job interview, whenever it may be, it requires that you answer this question, right? for yourself, right? About your personality, about who you are, about your experience, about your personal attributes, about the why you part of things and about the job compatibility, right? Think about it, right? We know that they're going to ask it. And if we know that they're going to ask it and we have a purpose of why we're sitting there, right? We do our preparation ahead of time. And that, that's, that's what this looks like. That's why it's not that complicated because we just identify these five different areas and make sure that we have our pre-prepared -pre answers ahead of time, right? So let's delve into actually how we go about doing that, okay? And I want you, as we're going along, to kind of think about yourself. Think about those traits. Think about those why yous, right? And maybe if you have a piece of paper, write it down on the side, right? kind of uh, use this opportunity to practice around one or two or three of those attributes. And we'll go through some examples. Okay, so before you start the interview, right? The interview starts before the interview actually starts, right? For those who didn't know, um, company research. You're expected to do research on a company, on the program, on the studies, on whatever it may be, yeah? 
Many people walk into job interviews and they don't know why they're actually there or what the company does. It's one of the easiest ways to cancel out a profile. So do a little bit of research on the company. You don't have to know which year they were founded and who are the starting members and what their average uh, income rate is, right? But you should know some of the basic aspects of it, yeah? Something that is helpful is finding out who your interviewer is, okay? And, and pictures in this case are helpful, right? Because you can become familiar with their face. It's not the first time that you see them. So if you know that you're going to be interviewed by a uh, man or by a woman, you're not surprised when the person's name is uh, Tal and you don't know if they are a boy or a girl, right? And this works also for American culture or for international culture where we don't know, right, what the names may be. I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, Asian and, and Chinese cultures, right? You don't know based upon the name of the person what their gender is. Therefore, if you look up a picture at a time, you can be a little bit more prepared. And it's not such a shock, not such a surprise, yeah? Age also plays a difference uh, here. I am relatively young, right, when it comes to interviewing. And I've had people kind of walk into my office for the interview like, whoa, you're young. Okay, well, it's not a secret. You, you could have looked me up beforehand. Having those pictures, having those online platforms uh, are, are there to help you and there to support you. Additionally, there's online platforms um, depending upon how large the company is, right? The larger companies, they'll have their interview process written out ahead of time. You can find them ultimately on all sorts of blogs and blogs and all sorts of uh, Facebook groups as well. Uh, they typically um, 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 you know, publicize the interview process, what questions they ask and whatever it may be, right? It's not a one-to-one -one copy, yeah? Uh, but it could give you some sort of a direction. So definitely before you start, before you even walk into the door, right? Do your homework, be prepared. Next, entrance. Now, if you recall the statistics from the beginning, right? Of why all these people are terrible at job interviews. Um, ultimately, not that complicated. What you need to do is head up, eye contact, clear and direct, firm handshake, Corona, of course, handshakes, whatever may be, whatever is appropriate appropriate dress, which is a big one, especially for Israelis. Um, saying the person's name and title can make a big difference, right? Oh, hello, Mr. Johnson. It's a pleasure to meet you, right? You know that you're talking to the right person. And also very importantly is to read the room, okay? Read the room, what that means is understanding what kind of dynamic you walked into, yeah? You know uh, if uh, your bubbly, bubbly and uh, fun and energetic atmosphere is, is, is good and a good fit, or is it better to be a little bit more formal, more serious, right? Try to adapt to the room in that sense. But really, the entrance, right, that first impression, the having, again, it's, it's really simple, just keeping your head up keeping eye contact, being clear and direct, right? Those things really make a, a huge difference. And you'd be surprised how many people fail at these things. The reason why it's so difficult is because you're nervous, you're stressed out, you're under pressure. It's tough, yeah? You don't know what you're walking into. You're facing the unknown. So it's very difficult to be confident in circumstances like that. So Shimon, I have a question. Yeah. Does a um, handshake is relevant for women as well? Yes, unless uh, for religious purposes, you feel that it's not appropriate. In general, in my opinion, handshakes for women also work, definitely. Um, yes. Um, so, okay, so that's the entrance, right? So before you walk into the room, take a deep breath, Head up, eye contact, clear and direct, firm handshake, walk in, do your best, make it happen, right? Let's move on. Next. Introduction. Actually, before we do that, does anyone have any questions on the entrance? I thought I heard someone. Yeah, yeah. so the question is, how do you do a strong entrance when the interview is uh, via 
Zoom, for example. Perfect. Excellent. Excellent. So everything that we're going to talk about today applies to Zoom as well. Okay. What we're going to, what we're talking about, what we're, what we're identifying here is a certain flow, is a certain environment. Yeah. The entrance, introductions, conversations, core questions, and everything that we're going to talk about in a moment, right? They all apply to Zoom as well. So what does a strong introduction mean on Zoom? Number one, making sure that your camera is good and your lighting is good. Number two, that your sound and audio is, is working correctly, right? That you don't have any distracting things in the background. Uh, those of us who have uh, children, try to have them occupied in a different area, right? For, for 10 minutes or 20 minutes, whatever it may be, yeah? All of these uh, concepts apply as well to the virtual side of things, right? If it's blurring the background or not blurring the background, if it's having a virtual background or something else, right? These are things that you need to take into consideration. What does a strong entrance look like? Well, it depends upon what you're able and capable to do, yeah? A lot of us don't have the opportunity to move to a room that's meant for Zoom and has the perfect lighting, yeah? Some of us have our bedrooms in the background or a different working space. Maybe we're at a coffee uh, shop, right? I'm not gonna go into so many details in that regard, but ultimately be aware of that and try to do everything in your power to make sure that it is an easy and smooth start. Can I have another question? Yeah. How can I prepare for cultural differences if excellent. I, that's the question. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Cultural differences uh, is, uh, is, is uh, a very good question and it's a very good point to bring up. At the end of the day, you are not expected to understand another person's culture to the most refined levels uh, that a native person will be. Okay, let's take American culture. So I'm originally from the United States. I was born and raised uh, in America. I'm half American, half Dutch. And I moved to Israel when I was 18, right? Uh, so you are not expected to know American culture like I know American culture because maybe you haven't lived there, you haven't been there, okay? So there are certain things that we keep to as general uh, formalities, right? And it's always better to be more on the formal side than it is to be on the less formal side, no doubt about it. If you're ever in doubt, be more formal, okay? Um, do, do a little bit of research on, uh, on Google, right? You'll find some things, but again, you're not expected to know all the different nuances in the culture. That's not, uh, that's not what's gonna make a difference there. Be open, be thoughtful, be um, you know, intent, with intent in that regard, uh, but, but don't worry about it overall. Okay. I um, have another yeah. question as well. Um, how do you overcome uh, language uh, difficulties? For instance, I'm not a native English speaker. So I, I, I can perform a conversation in English, hear this lecture in English, but I don't feel confident enough uh, to have an interview in English, for instance. Excellent. So we'll talk about English uh, in, a, in a later stage. Um, for now, let's focus on the entrance and then move on to the English part as we go along. But we'll talk about that as well. Okay, uh, for the sake of time, let's uh, move on uh, and uh, make sure that we, we stick to the schedule because I have a tendency to go a little bit late. Uh, okay, introductions. So you made your entrance, you walked into the room. Congratulations, you did the first uh, hard part, yeah? Um, the introductions are extremely important because first impressions matter. Very simple. Right, your first impression will dictate what happens for the rest of the interview. Okay, typically, and this is unfortunately in a lot of in a lot of senses, right? The interviewer will already make up his or her mind within the first two to five minutes of the interview, right? Because again, they've been there, they've seen the people, they know the candidates, they can get a general uh, understanding of of who you are and of whether or not you're fit for their job, be it in personality and experience and culture and, and language skills, right? Within the first five minutes, that's pretty much your window, right? If you make it, then make sure you keep that standard. If you don't make it, right, then you're fighting the rest of the interview to convince the interviewer uh, that uh, they should change their initial impression. So we wanna make sure that our first impression is 
strong. Okay. And strong, what that means is we'll talk about that in a moment. Okay. So you know what to, what to expect, right? You know that you're gonna walk into the room, that you're gonna sit down, that they're gonna, you know, maybe shake your hand, maybe you know, invite you to sit, to take a seat, close the door, open the door, whatever it may be, right? So if you know what to expect, what do you want them to know? You know, think about it for, for, for a moment, right? If you're now walking and uh, you're in the room for the first time, all right, what is it exactly that you want the interviewer to know when it comes to your introduction, all right? What can you say that will make a difference? Let's start with what not to say. And this drives me nuts every single time. And it happens so often, right? The first thing that people will say when they open their mouth, especially Israelis, it's, so my name is whatever the name is, and I live in, you know, Petafikla or something. Uh, I have uh, three siblings, and each one of them does this and this, and my father does that, and, and, and goes into the whole family uh, uh, breakdown of, of, of their, their, their history and, and who knows what, yeah? Um, I don't know where this started, right? And I can tell you, interviewing Israelis, this happens so often, um, and I and I understand a little bit why. But the interviewer does not care about your family. Sorry to break it to you. Okay, uh, I'm sure it's lovely, and I'm sure you all come from wonderful backgrounds and healthy childhoods and everything, and that's that's great, right? But you don't need to tell the interviewer how many siblings you have. Kind of drop that out of your mind. And it's, it, it, it sounds funny even saying this in a workshop, but knowing the audience that I'm speaking to now, I know how relevant this may be. Okay. Uh, next thing is the, as you know, my name is whatever, right? Of course, the interviewer knows. And if you're saying, as you know, then why are you saying, as you know? Get rid of that. Okay. And then the same thing with the whole background. I was born in uh, Give a Time and then I moved to Tel Aviv, right? Uh, because uh, a lot of Israelis like to show that they moved to Tel Aviv or they moved out of Tel Aviv or whatever. It shows something about your personality, yeah? Uh, again, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Unless you're not born in Israel, you don't need to mention where you've lived in the country. Not in the beginning, at least, yeah? If you think that this is a relevant uh, fact about your personality and something that you want to share, excellent. But this is not how we start off. Okay? What can we say? Here's a few lines. Now, there's many different options here. Okay? You can go many different directions. Um, some of this may, may speak to you on a more personal level and may be more relevant and others may and may not. Right? It depends upon your style and your uh, personality. Right? The way that is more formal in that sense is number one, to be appreciative and grateful, right? Thank you for taking the time to meet me, right? I appreciate the opportunity to interview for this position. I'm excited to be interviewed for this position because um, I've read about you in the newspaper and this is a wonderful opportunity, who knows, yeah? Now, if we kind of connect that into a sentence, yeah? If this is our start in a more clear, direct, strong sense, like, hi, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for, for, for taking the time to meet with me. I'm excited to be here and hope that you find me a good fit for your company. Now we can start the interview. This it's is what we mean start. by- I think it's a good start. You think it's a good start? I, good. I, I've been lightning right, lightning right, right now. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Um, this is what we mean by being clear and direct, right? You don't need to play a whole game. This is not a uh, cat and mouse. This is not uh, dating in that sense where you walk up to whoever it is you're seeing in the bar or they walk up to you, right? Forget that. This is clear and direct and straightforward. Thank you. I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm direct. My name is human. I'm hungry for this job and I want to be here. Yeah? Don't be too aggressive. But uh, uh, that's the direction that we want to go for or, or lean into overall. Any questions about the introduction? I have a question, actually. Yeah. Um, uh, previous, uh, um, ah, I don't know. Previous stage, okay. 
um, you said that we we don't we shouldn't say uh, where we uh, moved. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we moved from uh, this and that. Okay. Afterwards, uh, if I had if if it's the uh, the real reason for me to uh, changing a job, okay. I've, uh, I changed the job and I moved because of this. I'm searching for a new job. It's, it's uh, re relevant to say, right? For sure it's relevant to say, but let me ask you a question. Do you think okay. that that is the first thing that should come out of your mouth? Again? Do you why, think why, that, why, that, don't that, you, why don't I say it? It's definitely relevant. It's definitely important. The question is, is that how you start off the interview? Oh, right? okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we'll talk about raising issues. That's a good point as well as, uh, as we go along. Okay. Moving on. Okay. So let's you. talk about the next part. So we said, right, we have our pre-interview stage. Then we have our entering the room. Then we have our introductions. Yeah. Now we have the core questions. And this is where the methodology comes in. Again, when we understand that we walk into the interview knowing that there are going to be a certain series of questions that they're going to ask us about a certain number of categories, right? About your personal self, about your uh, job compatibility, the why you, your experience, your personal attributes. We know that they're going to ask about those things. What do we do? We prepare ahead of time for those exact issues, those exact points, okay? So the methodology here, and this is what uh, I wanna give you guys over to today, right? Is understanding how to do that. And what I believe is one of the more successful manners of doing so, okay? So number one, what do you want to say? Could be related to your personality, could be related to your job experience, could be related to why you, could be related to anything, right? What is it exactly that you want to say? You want to say that you are hardworking, right? And we'll go through examples in a moment, right? Next is why does it matter to you, okay? Of course, your personal attributes of uh, the fact that you are innovative is important. Everyone knows that it's important, right? And being a team leader and having, you know, good uh, relationship skills, uh, interpersonal skills, right? Of course it matters, but why does it matter to you? Because the job interview is not about anyone else. It's about you. That's why you're there. They wanna get to know you. They wanna hear about you. So whatever it is that you're going to say, back it up by why it matters to you. Next part, and this is key when it comes to interviewing, is having a results-based answer. Right? Just because you said something, it doesn't mean anything. You have to back it up with some sort of a proof, right? If it's, uh, uh, I've done this and this, and therefore it's led me to the result of X, Y, and Z, then great. It shows that you've actually used it and done it, right? But result-based answers, and more specifically, right? Using specific examples, okay? Let's talk, let's do, let's do an example together. We're gonna to do three of these, yeah? Uh, and here, uh, if you guys want to unmute yourselves and jump in, that's also done. Number one, let's say, right? Taking some of the characteristics that uh, people want to talk about is that you wanna say that you're dedicated, that you're hardworking and that you have high standards. It's typically things that people look for and it comes to job interviews. It's typically things that people say when they're in the interview, right? You say, I'm dedicated, I'm hardworking, and I have high standards, right? But again, just because you say it doesn't mean anything. So let's use this as an example. You're dedicated, hardworking, and I have high standards, which I'm assuming applies to uh, the vast majority of you. Or at least I hope so. Um, why is it important to you? Meaning, of course, it's important to be dedicated and hardworking and have high standards. But why is that something that matters to you specifically? It makes us kind of think for a second. What am I, why, why is it important for me to be dedicated? 
What does it mean that I'm that I'm hardworking? Why why does the the the, the interviewer care about these things, right? Next stage, once we have the answer to that question, right, and that's a personal answer for all of you, is a result-based answer, okay? Having some sort of a concrete process to whatever it is that happened because of those attributes, and then using specific examples. So what does that look like in a sentence? Yeah, it sounds like I'm a dedicated, hardworking individual with high standards. This is important for me because, and then you include why it's important for you, and as a result of these attributes, I've accomplished something else, right? And insert whatever it is here. So uh, maybe a volunteer from the audience, uh, for those who want, uh, someone who this connects to, would you be willing to share why it's important to you and kind of give us an example based off of result? Can I ask a question? Yes. I can say that I'm a dedicated person and a hard work person, but sometimes it's because of the personality of the person and not because I did something during my life that led to me being that kind of person. So what can I say in an interview that the interviewer will actually understand that this is actually true, what I'm saying? Wonderful, excellent point. Uh, the answer to that, is that if it's part of your personality, you've done it. It doesn't have to be uh, that you started the company and that you uh, made a million dollars and that you finished your bachelor's, master's, PhD degree, right? But if it's part of your personality, you've done it. At the end of the day, you are unique. All of you are unique because you are you. You have your own personal backgrounds and your own personal stories that have shaped who you are in today's uh, time, right? In today's day and age, yeah? You are not the person sitting next to you. You are not the candidate that walked into the interview room before you, and you are not the candidate that walks in after you. Therefore, these traits, these personality things, these uh, aspects about your experience, they are relevant only to you because this is who you are, right? And this is why the, the why in this, uh, in this case is important, right? This is where it plays a role, where it's okay. You say that you are dedicated. I don't know, Shaked, can you give me another attribute or example of something that you'd wish to share? I can say that when I start a job, I get the job done till the end. I won't stop at the middle. I won't stop halfway. I will finish the job. And that's Maybe. because... I can say I was raised that way. I can say that I'm I'm used to doing that. That's the only thing I know, but I can't give some kind of excuse because of that I'm that way. So I won't, wouldn't Perfect. know what to say. Perfect. Uh, so you said it exactly, right? You say that you are, so that's dedicated, right? Starting something and finishing it is dedicated, uh, uh, persistent, uh, hardworking, uh, not giving up. Um, tenacious, right? Insert English word here, um, and and you you are you are that way because of many different things, right? Could be family values and the way that you were raised, right? So you can say, okay, um, I am dedicated and persistent because this is how I was raised. This has been a core aspect of my childhood and my personality that has led me up until this point to do whatever it is that you do in life, right? And you can apply this to things that are big projects or things that are little, little projects, right? Ultimately, it doesn't make a difference. Let's use another example, right? Let's say you, you don't have the dedication part of things, but rather you want to say that you're you know, looking for experience and that you're ready to learn, yeah? Which also is relevant for a lot of people in this room, okay? Because you walk into the company and you don't necessarily have the technical skills behind it. So what do you want to tell them, right? Oh, I don't have the technical skills. Don't hire me. Of course not. You want to tell them that you're willing to learn, right? That you're looking for the experience, that you, you want to be a part of it and, and, and get what you can out of it, right? But just because you say it doesn't mean it has meaning. So you have to back that up with why it's important to you. Why is it that you are looking for experience? 
why is it that you are uh, ready to learn? What about this particular moment in time of your life shows that you or, or, or led to the fact that you are interested in learning more, be it a new skill, be it a new job, be it a new sector, be it a new whatever it may be, right? This is your time to shine in that sense. So you say that you're here and that you want to learn, right? And that you want to gain the experience uh, so that you can go be the next uh, uh, big, uh, I don't know, CEO of whatever company, right? But why does that matter to you on a personal level, right? And once you understand why it matters to you, think about a specific example in your life where you've uh, shown that you're ready to learn, right? One of the easiest examples in this case, right, is uh, education, okay? Um, I am the kind of person who loves to learn, right? I look for experiences. I'm eager to learn about life. This is important to me because uh, I believe that knowledge is power and that the more experiences that I can gain, it will allow me to grow and develop and be of use for you and your company. I've done this, right? These attributes have led me to accomplish, um, one, finishing my bachelor's degree, two, finishing my master's degree, three, finishing whatever other time that you've done this, right? Could be also in certificates, yeah? I've done 200 uh, Udemy and Coursera certificates or, you know, whatever. It's your story. It's your personal thing, right? Or this led me to uh, uh, travel around the world and volunteer with uh, children in Africa, right? It, it, whatever whatever the circumstances, whatever the story is, right? It's, it's you. It's your characteristic. The question is, which of your experiences are most closely related to back it up, the attribute that you want the interviewer to know about you, right? This applies to your job experience as well. When they ask you, oh, tell me about your greatest professional achievement, right? Or why do you think you'll be uh, uh, an attribute to this team, right? This is your chance to shine. This is your chance to say, I'm dedicated, I'm hardworking, I'm, uh, let's do the third one, right? I'm a high achiever and I look for success, yeah? Don't stick to the classic things that we've been told to do, which is just to answer the question, because that's what the interviewer wants. The interviewer does not want you to answer the question just like that. Why are you a good contribution to the team? Because I'm a team leader. I know how to lead people, right? No, they know your experience. They have your CV on their phone, printed out in front of them, whatever it is. They know it. They've seen it, right? That's why you're sitting in the room. What are they looking for? They're looking for more than the piece of paper. They want to hear you. They wanna see you. They wanna see your passion and excitement and willingness to be part of whatever company culture you're trying to get into, right? So let's take another example in that sense, right? Let's say you wanna say that you're a high achiever that you're looking for success. Um, this is relevant also for people that uh, want the job because it pays well, yeah? Which is, which is no secret, yeah? Jobs that have uh, higher salaries, are more uh, requested because we want to get paid more, yeah? Uh, who doesn't like money in that sense, right? So you don't walk into the interview and say, oh, I'm here because you guys pay well. No. Now, I know all of you wouldn't do that, but a lot of times it comes out that way, whether you like it or not. So instead, right, make it an attribute about you, that you're looking for success, that you're a high achiever. What are we saying? We have to back it up by something, right? Why is it important to you? Why are why does it matter? Why does success matter to you? Why does being a high achiever and making a high salary matter to you? Because you want to go uh, party with all your money and uh, do whatever, or because you want to support your family and give to charity, or because it's something that's an important part of your life, right? Let's uh, put it in words. Yeah, I'm a high achiever and I strive for success in every aspect of my life. Right? This is important to me because, for you guys, right? fill in your area of that's why important. Yeah. Um, those attributes have led me to accomplish creating my own company, speaking publicly, getting good jobs, whatever, who knows, right? Being a, um, an excellent student or having a wonderful family, right? The example 
is your personal story. So where does all this meet us, right? What does that, what does that mean when we talk about these core questions, yeah? This methodology applies to all the different aspects of the interview when it comes to the, the middle part, the main part, the, the meat, when it comes to the interview itself. Because again, they know your history. They know your CV. If they've done a good job, they've even done an extra Google search on you, maybe one, maybe two, yeah? So what is it about you that you wanna share with them, okay? When they ask you, what is your, uh, what do you think your greatest strengths are? What do you think your greatest weaknesses are? They don't want you just to list off, oh, I'm a high achiever, dedicated and self learner. And my weaknesses are that I'm occasionally lazy and terrible at uh, marketing and uh, who knows what, right? No, they wanna hear about you. They wanna hear from you. So use these examples, use this methodology to bring yourself into the interview. This is what I mean when I say that this is one of the very few types of public speaking that is reciprocal. You have a chance to respond and not only respond, but also take the conversation in a different way, yeah? You can, and it's even sometimes encouraged to, to, to kind of lead the interviewer along a certain journey that you wanna take with them, right? to talk about those stories about your personality, to talk about those achievements that you've done that you've accomplished, right? This is your time and you can use it how you wanna use it. Uh, there are certain standards and certain expectations, no doubt, right? If, you, if, if the interviewer asks you, you know, what are your weaknesses or, or, or whatever it may be and you start going off on your whole childhood story, then of course that's not, you know, uh, related, yeah? But that said, you can always answer the question and then shift into a different area. We'll talk about that in the next part. Any questions on the methodology? Moving on. Okay. Um, stress. One of my favorite parts. Um, when it comes to stress and panic, okay? How are we doing on time? Good on time. When it comes to stress and panic, right? Interviewers, uh, interviews in general, put you in this strange and uncomfortable position because you're being evaluated. You're being judged, okay? You're not having a conversation with your friend, right? You're not uh, uh, ordering food in a restaurant. You are being evaluated. You are being judged. It is a test, 100%, okay? And when we are tested as humans, we get stressed out. It happens, it's part of it, right? We feel some sort of, uh, uh, those who study behavioral science or psychology maybe can uh, inform us more on a different day, but it's, uh, it's uh, part of who we are, okay? So how do we handle stress when it comes to an interview? I'm gonna start with a more technical part, which is audible pauses, and then we'll kind of take a step back from there. So. Audible pauses, uh, for those who this is your first time hearing the phrase, right? Audible pauses are pauses that we have in our speech that are audible, meaning that they make noise, okay? Examples of these, right, are um, em, eh, all those kind of strange sounds that we make as uh, fillers for the conversation. Where it comes from, the psychology and the physiology behind it is that the brain is thinking about what to say, right? But it hasn't thought of the word yet. The mouth is used to speaking, right? And it's waiting for something to come out. There's a certain disconnect when there's not enough words, right? And eh comes out. And it's normal. It's part of our process. It's part of speech, right? It's not it's not that uh, the end of the world, right? When you're on a stage, it's a little bit more uh, noticeable, right? Especially when you're being filmed. But ultimately, you can live with it. That said, if you're able to overcome your audible pauses, those ums and ms and es and os and whatever it may be, it shows that you are able to control that disconnect between when you are very quickly thinking about what to say 
and your mouth is already just, you know, spewing out whatever needs to come out, right? So if you're able to control that, if you're able to kind of slow down, take a deep breath and get rid of those audible pauses, it makes a big difference when it comes to your execution and how you look when you're stressed out. Because stress in this scenario, right, is expected. If you walk into the interview and you're happy and joyous and not stressed out at all, right, and you're not worried about anything, then, then the interview is going to be like, okay, what's going on here? It's a little bit strange. Like, we're evaluating you. You know that, right? So having that stress is expected. So it's not about getting rid of the stress. It's about managing it. It's about handling it. So audible pauses is one of those ways to show that you are in control of yourself, that you are in control of your speech, and that you are in control of your thoughts. Okay? That's the first one. Next is dropping transitional phases, uh, phrases. Transitional phrases, right, are phrases that we use, a certain series of sentences or words that we use to jump from point to point in the conversation, right? Those are so, therefore, furthermore, moreover, uh, as you know, all those kind of other transitional words, okay? If you drop those, makes a big difference on your execution of your speech. If you find yourself saying, so this, so that, so that, so this, right, again and again and again, you drop those so's. Yeah? So is what comes up most often in interviews. Um, or if it's therefore, right? You don't need to say therefore. It's a transitional phrase. You're moving from point to point, just move from point to point. It's not the end of the world. Next is how to pause. And uh, for the person who asked about the English questions uh, before, uh, pausing is one of the biggest challenges for non-native uh, non English speakers, where you, maybe you find a certain expression or a certain series of words difficult to say in English. So what do you do? You pause for a moment to think about it. One, you translate it in your brain, right, in your mind. Uh, you think about what it is that you want to say, right? And then you formulate your sentence and say it out. And that requires a certain amount of time, right? That time could be very, very quickly, milliseconds, right? For those who are more comfortable in English, right? And that time could be a few seconds for those of us that maybe takes a little bit longer to get it out. And for those who is even more difficult or English is not something that you practice on a normal uh, basis, Right? That could be an even longer pause, maybe 10 seconds. Yeah? 10 second pauses is a long time. If I were to pause now for 10 seconds, you'd all be checking your microphones and speakers and making sure something didn't happen with the internet. Yeah? The same thing applies to interviews. Okay? Knowing how to pause plays a big part in your expected or your perceived fluency or general knowledge, right, of the English language or any language, okay? So how to pause is understanding that you have a limited amount of time to do your pause. Number one, if you need it, definitely do it. Don't rush in and try to force yourself to say sentences that you don't even know what you're trying to say because you're still translating in your head halfway through. Right? That's what leads to those audible pauses, those ums and ms and es and os. Okay? And you also want to make sure that you're being direct with your speech. That you're not going on all sorts of you know, twisted and long ways of explaining what it is about your personality or about your experience or about your compatibility for the job right? to the interviewer. So you have a limited amount of time to pause. You can pause. Go for it. No problem. Collect your thoughts, but not for too long. And just be aware of it, just to understand, okay, no problem. English is not my native language, right? Take a moment to collect my thoughts and move forward. Don't let that thought process of, oh, I need to take a pause, ruin your whole mojo for the rest of the interview, right? It happens. Accept it, understand it, and move on. Don't let it uh, kill your flow, okay? Next, 
uh, let's jump to anchors and not the don't know the answer part, right? Anchors, right, are something, be it physical, be it mental, be it uh, uh, spiritual, for those who are more connected to the spiritual side of things, that kind of bring us back to a certain point, okay? Where we can pick up again from that point because we get flustered. Let's say we get flustered in the interview, right? We want to make sure for those who this works for them, of course, it's a matter of personality and personal taste that we can kind of come back to a point where we're like, from here, I will move forward, all right? If it's telling yourself in your mind, uh, I am strong, I am independent, I can do this, all right? So you use your pause to tell that to yourself in your brain, move forward. And that can be something that you can be anchored to. If you want to use a physical object, uh, if you have a, for, for the ladies in the audience, if you have a bracelet or a watch or, or, or something like that, that you can kind of touch and remind yourself, okay, I have a purpose here. I know what I'm doing. I want this job because it matters to me. It's important to me because it will help me do, insert, you know, whatever it's going to help you do. Then you can kind of give yourself a physical reminder, a tap on the leg, uh, a certain mantra in your mind, right? To kind of anchor okay. yourself back. So say, want... from here, I'm going to move forward. Yeah. Aren't these signs of uh, anxiousness or uh, anxiety that you don't want to express on, on a job interview? Yeah, so don't do it too much, definitely. You don't want to look uh, neurotic uh, in that sense where you're constantly clutching your hands or pens or all sorts of strange tappings and things like that. Uh, but if you do need to take a second to pause and you're kind of flustered, it's much better for you to gain control over your flusteredness, right, over your uneasiness and move forward as opposed to having to deal with that for the rest of the 20 minutes of the interview, right? Um, and if it requires some sort of, okay, hey, I'm a little bit uh, nervous right now, uh, but uh, let me just collect my thoughts and move forward. It's better to do that one time and get it over with than having to deal with all sorts of strange language barriers as we go along. Does that make sense? Yes, thanks. Nice, awesome. Okay. And then next part, let's say you don't know the answer to the question. It, it, it happens uh, a lot uh, in interviews, right? We're not always fully prepared. Maybe they ask us a question that catches us off guard. Um, good interviewers will know how to do that in a natural and easy way. Well, they'll purposely ask you something that you maybe didn't prepare for, or maybe that requires a little bit of extra thought process. Um, for example, in some of the larger tech companies, they'll ask you, uh, more difficult questions that are designed to challenge your thought process, like uh, how many outlets are in the building, right? Uh, or what is the uh, uh, number of people that are here? Or how many doors did you pass in when you walked into the building, right? So those are a little bit more technical questions. And I doubt that unless you're looking for a position that's more technical than those are, some companies use those interview questions in general. You can look them up ahead of time. Um, but for the purposes of our conversation, let's say you genuinely don't know the answer to the question, right? Take it back to your comfort zone. That could mean, right? That could be, yeah. Actually, I don't know the answer to that question, but I'm the kind of person who will go out of his way above and beyond to learn the answers to these things, to reach out to my friends and resources in order for me to be of value to this company, right? doesn't have to be that rehearsed, but take it back to an area that you are comfortable with right? and then you use that methodology. I believe that this is important because knowledge and experience is something that matters to me, something that I was raised on, something that is a big part of my life as I raise my own children. And it has led me to reading 40 books a year and uh, doing all sorts of whatever, right? Again, the examples don't really matter because the examples are for you. But take it back to your comfort zone. Take it back to that methodology. Even if you don't know the direct answer to that question. Be honest. Be straightforward. Don't pretend to get out of the question just to get out of the question. Right? First of all, answer the question. And from there, take it back to your comfort zone. Last but not least is breathing. Okay? Um, your breath. Is, is, is very important when it comes to the interview. You wanna make sure that you're taking deep breaths, but not that it looks very strange, right? You wanna feel comfortable. Breathing is one of those uh, ways 
that allows your body to kind of get into a certain flow to be more comfortable, more relaxed, sit up straight, bring your arms, uh, your shoulders back, head tall, look up, eye contact, take a deep breath and, and, and feel in control, right? The purpose of the interview is to get to know you. The person who knows you best is yourself, right? You know what you wanna to bring to the table. You know what attributes about your personal self, your experience, your professional background, your uh, job compatibility, and why you, right? You know what you wanna to bring to the table. Feel confident about that. You are unique. This is your time to shine, okay? Any questions about uh, stress? Moving on. Next, Q and A, okay? Questions and answers happen in every single interview. Right, the HR manuals teach us that we must, right, the interviewer must ask the, uh, do you have any questions, right, uh, as part of uh, as part of the interview, right? That's uh, a must in all uh, interviews. Okay, so if we know that it's coming, yeah, what do we do? We prepare ahead of time. Yeah, big surprise. That's what this is all about. It's about preparation. We know that they're gonna ask us, do you have any questions before we finish? Yeah. If that's the case, what do we wanna do? So number one, the importance of uh, the Q&A part is that it's your last chance to really uh, to change your interviewer's mind, right? Maybe you can bring some sort of unique perspective. Maybe you can show some part of your personality that hasn't been shared up until now, right? This is your chance. This is your, ch your time to shine. That said, make sure that your questions are relevant to the specific time of the interview. It's quite annoying when people ask you, oh, um, um, uh, this is important for me in six months time. Yeah? No, your questions, make sure that they're relevant to the, to the context of the interview, right? And also keep it brief. In general, if you ask short questions, you'll get a longer answer. If you ask longer questions, you'll get a shorter answer. Uh, for those who watch uh, interviews on the news and things like that, uh, you'll realize that that's the case a lot of the times, okay? So keep your questions brief and keep it to the point. That said, right, you, it, is, it is important to ask uh, some sort of a question if you have one, right? Um, questions about questions? Do we have to ask questions or we can no, just... Don't have to. If everything is absolutely clear and absolutely purple, uh, purple, uh, uh, purple. If everything is uh, uh, perfect in that sense, then you don't have to ask a question. But if you feel that you're kind of struggling, then maybe have one uh, just uh, in case. Okay. Okay. Next. More important than the uh, question part is the conclusion part. Okay. And again, you'll know when it's ending. There'll be kind of that, that flow into, okay, we're finishing up now. And, oh, one last question or one more thing, or they'll do the question part beforehand. Do you have any questions before we finish off, right? So if you know that that's happening, prepare. Like everything that we've talked about this in, in this interview. And the conclusion, right, is, is your time for this, okay? So is there anything that you want to add before you leave the room? Meaning, take that power, take that status away from the interviewer, right? And give that back to yourself, right? Instead of them saying, okay, uh, you have anything more, get out. No, this is your chance. This is your time. Maybe throughout the interview, you didn't get a chance to share one of your stories about your personality or about your job experience or about why you're a good fit for the job, right? Maybe based off of the questions or it was too short, it was too long or, or who knows what, you got flustered and you forgot to mention that uh, uh, you uh, led a team of whatever in a certain circumstance that led to a big success, right? Again, examples are for you. So we're not going into specific examples. So this is your time, yeah? Where you can even say, before we finish up, I would like to share one more thing about myself that I think is relevant for this interview. And that is whatever it is, right? And again, use that methodology. 
what it is that you're saying, why it's important to you, uh, using a result-based answer and a specific example, right? But this is, this is your opportunity. The power of the interview is not with the interviewer, but also with the interviewee, the person being interviewed. So think about what is important for you to share. What is important for you to bring to the table? Because this is your last chance, right? This is it. This is when it, this is when it's over. Okay? You can use this, again, to go back to the methodology. You can use this to share something specific, whatever you want. The fact is that this is your time. Okay, raising issues. This is connected to the conclusion in that sense, uh, but can also be uh, as you go along, maybe throughout the interview, you're interested in knowing more about the salary, more about the schedule, more about the vacation days, more about other job perks. Maybe you're still studying your degree uh, and uh, you wanna let them know that you're, you, know, you have school on certain days. Uh, maybe you have family events that are coming up. Uh, your sister's getting married, you're getting married, whatever it may be, who knows, right? Um, and, and you want to kind of raise certain issues along the way, you can do that. But the way that you do that is not by being so direct, like we've talked about up until now, but rather making these issues, these points, something that actually has some sort of a value, a personal value to you. Because of course, we're all interested in knowing the salary, and we're all interested in you know, making sure that we get our vacation days. Um, let's use the degree for an example, just because it's an easy one, right? Instead of telling them, hey, you know, just before we finish, it's important for me to let you know that I'm also a student. I'll be finishing up in the next few months. Uh, and I want to make sure that that's okay for our schedule. Right? That, that's fine. You can definitely say that. However, you can use this opportunity to connect to those same things that the interviewer is looking for. Right? So instead of saying, hey, it's important for me to let you know that I'm finishing up my degree and therefore I'm not available on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, whatever after four, right? you say, it's important for me to let you know that learning and education is something that's, that matters to me. And as you may have already seen on my uh, CV, I'm currently a student and having these education um, classes, whatever it may be, right, is important to me. And therefore, I'd like to let you know that on these and these days, I am studying this and this degree, right? What did we do? What is the, what's the big difference? You're sitting there and she went, you know, eh, it's not a really big deal, yeah, right? But this is the difference between a good interview and an excellent interview. You use every opportunity that is available to you in raising these issues, right? Raising uh, things about, uh, let's say, vacation days and family, right? Uh, I'm a family-oriented man. Therefore, it's important for me to make sure that this job uh, is fit for a family man. Just so you know, my sister is getting married. I don't know, whatever. Take it to right, whatever direction you want, right? But use the opportunity of raising these issues to share something about you that matters for the job. That's, that's the key element here. That's, that's ultimately, again, Everything in this workshop all comes together in that sense. It's taking advantage of, the, of these opportunities, knowing that we have a certain goal in mind. Okay, exiting. Exiting is just as important as entering, okay? The so same rules applies. Head up, eye contact, clear, direct, firm handshake, name and title, if you can. Not that complicated. You may be a little bit excited. You're, you're dying to get out of the room because you know that the interview went really, really well or really, really bad and you just want to leave, yeah? Exit with the proper formalities, with the proper you know, ways and etiquette of ending, right? Again, think about those statistics that I shared with you in the beginning of the workshop, yeah? They, they really makes a difference. So if you just make eye contact and, and say thank you nicely, it, it already puts you in a different category. And it sounds so silly, but it's so practical and so relevant because few people actually do it. Okay. How are we doing on time? Good on time. Um, as far as conclusion for us. Yeah, so we talked about conclusion for the interview. Now let's talk about 
our conclusion. So ultimately, interviews are not that difficult at the end of the day. Right? Why are they not difficult? Because we already know. We already know what's going to happen, more or less. Not exactly, right? Not which exact questions, but we know that there's a certain expectation. There's a certain understanding and a certain series of characteristics more than the resume or application process or whatever it may be that the interviewer is looking for, right? So we come prepared for those issues. We come prepared knowing what we wanna say, okay? You put yourselves in the mind of the interviewer, okay? How many people do you think he or she has interviewed already? How many people have said the same exact things again and again and again? I'm a hard worker. Doesn't mean anything. Back it up. Know what you want to say. Use the methodology. Be aware of your actions. Okay? Starts with awareness. That being confident and comfortable in your chair. That keeping eye contact throughout the interview, which is something so basic. Yet because we're in a natural state, state of stress and pressure and panic, especially in English, right? What, I have to spend the next 30 minutes talking in English? How am I going to do that, right? Just being aware is already the first step in you making a big, and I mean a big difference when it comes to your nonverbal body language in the interview itself. And that connects to also breath, breathing. You need a pause. You need to take a moment. No problem. Do it. Not so often, but do it because it's much better for you to get connected and uh, collected, right? And to feel ready to give your answer than it is to just botch everything else and jump from point to point and, and do unrelated things, right? What does that mean, right? What does that look like? You know, right? Again, I'm going to keep on saying this. You know what's going to happen. So all you really need to do is just come prepared, prepared knowing exactly, I mean exactly what you wanna say or what areas you wanna highlight about yourself in your personal self, your professional experience, your job compatibility, the why you and your personal attributes because that is the ultimate purpose of the interview. That's what that looks like. So thank you. Uh, this is wonderful. We even finished ahead of time. And the reason why I wanted to finish ahead of time is to also have time for questions. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can see all of your faces. Uh, and I want to make sure that we can kind of address some of the questions as we go along. Uh, and if anyone has something specific that they want to bring up, then, then uh, now is the time. There is a good question on the chat. Oh, question on the chat. Um, what would be the best way to answer during an interview for a question like, what are your downsides? Wonderful. Um, there's a lot of different uh, uh, methods of how to answer the downside questions, right? Your weaknesses, uh, your struggles, your pains, uh, all that kind of stuff. Ultimately, right, the reason why the interviewer is asking that question is to kind of get real with you and make sure that you know that you're human. Yeah. Because we walk into the interviews and we think to ourselves, we got this. Everything that I've done in my entire life has prepared me for this moment and I'm going to kill this interview. This is mine. Yeah. Uh, and we tend to kind of uh, boost ourselves up. We tend to kind of uh, make our resumes a little bit more uh, uh, extravagant yeah? uh, for, for, for being uh, nice um, than they actually are. Right. You, the, again, there's another statistics that's, that's out there about how many people lie on their resumes, right? Just straight up lying because they want to get the job. So they walk into the interview and they, you know, make it happen. Um, so the purpose of the downside question of the weakness question is really just to get real with you and to make sure that you're, you're able to, 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 to answer those kind of things. Because if you say to the interviewer, I don't have any weaknesses, all right? That's, uh, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. We all have weaknesses. And you can share those weaknesses. Uh, the, the, a good way to kind of go about it and go around it is to kind of highlight weaknesses that you feel 
or something that you're able and willing to share. Right? You can even say some examples about how you overcome some of those weaknesses. Yeah, let's use uh, laziness as an example, right? Because we never want to say to the interviewer that we're lazy, right? But uh, it was either Thomas Edison or Albert Einstein, I don't remember which one of the two um, said it, but that laziness is just finding the fastest, quickest, and cheapest way to get something done, right? So you say at times, right, I have a tendency to be a little, a little bit lazy. However, I try to use this attribute the best that I can because I believe that it's about finding the quickest, fastest, and cheapest way to get something done. I don't see it as cutting corners. I have a very high professional standard, but I will think of ways to make this process happen a little bit quicker. Okay, so be, be real with yourself. Be real with your, with your weaknesses in that sense. I hope that answered the question. Who's next? Or it's 9.23 and everyone's uh, tired. Ah. See, I get excited about interviews. This is why I'm passionate about it. I can keep on going for the rest of the night, whoever wants to stay. Um, but Lior, should we wrap it up or should we give time for one more question? I think that you can wrap it up. <laughs> okay, excellent. So thank you everyone for coming. Uh, I know that this is a, a challenging issue, that this is something that a lot of us struggle with at various stages in our lives, right? It could be whether we're very young and have no experience, or it could be whether we're a lot older and we're transitioning into a new uh, job market or a new sector that we don't necessarily know about or whatever it is. Uh, the same rules apply here for people who have a lot of experience and people who have hardly any experience. It applies to entry roles, right? Or for the roles that you get as you enter the company in the beginning. And it also applies for managerial roles or uh, getting promotions in your own uh, company or business, right? It's about your personality. It's about your attributes. It's about being prepared. That makes the difference, okay? So use these concepts, use these ideas that were shared today. And if you need anything, uh, I'm here. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Imon. Bye. Bye. Thank you.